Our experts in emotion interview will be with Arturo Bejar, the director of engineering at Facebook, and he'll be speaking with us on emotion and social media. Arturo, uh, as director of engineering at Facebook, has worked on social tools to help people be more mindful of each other. This includes such areas as identity, harm and abuse prevention, ways to develop better online citizens, and tools designed to help resolve conflicts between individuals such as bullying. Previously, he worked at Yahoo, where he worked with a global team dedicated to providing a secure online experience. So I now turn to our last Experts in Emotion interview, together with Arturo Bejar on emotion and social media. So welcome, Arturo. Thank you for speaking with us today. Well, thank you very much for uh, hosting me. Great. So I wanted to start just by asking you a little bit about what first got you interested in studying emotion in the context of Facebook and the broader world of social media? So we we're looking at the reports that we were getting from people um, about photographs that they have uploaded on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And usually, as most sites do, you have these reports that are about the rules of the site. This has some violence, this has some drug use. And somebody says, hey, this photo has drug use. Can you please make it go away? And we would look at the photo and there was nothing in the photo that even remotely looked like that. It was just somebody like smiling, waving at the camera. And we're like, what's going on here? And we realized that the person that was submitting the report, in many cases, most cases, was in the photo. And the person who had uploaded the photo was one of their friends. Hmm. Um, and so we're like, okay, how can we help with this? And we figured out, okay, so you want people to be talking to each other. So we told them, hey, can you send a message to your friend letting them know that you would like them to remove the picture? And we put on an empty message box. And only 20% of people would send the message. And, um, and then in most cases, even the messages didn't convey really what, what it's like, hey, you know, this photo, there's something about it that makes me want to ask you to take it down. Hmm. At that time, we began meeting people um, that are doing research, scientists, from um, Stanford and Berkeley and Yale uh, who are doing all of this research about how people communicate and relate to each other. And one of the things that we learned is if you um, pick up that somebody else is experiencing an emotion, you're more likely to have a compassionate response. You're more likely to want to help them. Hmm. So we did this experiment where we provided some default messaging that people can edit and send saying, hey, you know, like, I, I don't like this photo, could you please take it down? It makes me sad. We experimented with emotion. And we saw a really meaningful result from that. Over 50% of people would send a message. And then most of the people who received the message would remove the photo. Um, and we knew we were onto something. And this was uh, where it began a, a lot of, of collaborations we're doing right now, where we're exploring what are ways that people can communicate emotion to each other online. That's fascinating. And so I wanted to ask you then, you know, the work that you're doing right now at Facebook related to emotion, um, what role have you found in this work so far um, suggesting that emotion does play a role in these online interactions in Facebook? Oh, it is uh, central um, uh, because it's, it's central to, I think, how people relate with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we have this flow now that, that we put into place where we say, hey, I'm in the photo. I don't want others to see me in this photo. If you notice the framing on that, it's, it's very um, emotional. Mm -hmm. um, and then we ask you, what is it about this photo that, that you don't uh, like? And we give you options that are emotions. It's embarrassing. It's a bad photo of me. Not as much an emotion, but an important thing to convey. <laughs> it makes me angry or upset, makes me sad. Um, and we found that people would select an emotion and then um, uh, take the message we provided that incorporated what we have learned about politeness and how you communicate. So, um, hey, Alice, there's something about this photo that's a little embarrassing to me. Um, could you please take it down? And we found that um, over 60, I think 67% of people will actually send the message, which is huge. Wow. Um, and uh, depending on the message, between 80 and 90% of people will use the text that we provided. Um, which means that we've captured their experience. Um, and even, um, I think more exciting than that, is we asked the people who had created, uploaded the photo, the content creators, mm -hmm. how they felt about the person who had sent them the message. Um, and remember, this is somebody who has just shared something with all of their friends because they think it's really cool. And one of their friends told them, hey, you know, that actually, you know, it's upsetting to me. Well, it turns out that the person who receives the message feels 60% positive like 60% of them feel positive about the person who sent them the message. Wow. 
um, and another 20%, they feel neutral. So it's like 80% of people, they kind of want to know if they did something that uh, was upsetting to you, which is very interesting to contrast against only 20% of people willing to communicate that emotion to their friends uh, to help resolve the situation. It's so interesting. So in what way do you think as we're thinking about these emotional relationships between people, you know, and trying to do things that will foster, you know, more positive interactions online, um, I want to ask a little bit about your work um, suggesting that Facebook may actually be one route to sort of cultivate, you know, compassion and encourage it. Well, we, we think um, based on the research that we've seen about how if you ex detect that somebody else is experiencing emotion, you're more likely to want to ease their suffering and so hence engage in a compassionate response. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we all know that uh, emails and messages might not be the best way to convey at least at certain emotions. Um, happy emotions are actually fairly easy to convey, like smiley faces, like buttons, these things um, are very easy to convey that are positive feelings. But conveying more complicated emotions, like something is embarrassing or something sad, uh, we have all of, the, all of these mechanisms um, that we have when we talk to each other, where you can read it in somebody's faces, you can hear it in the tone of their voice. And there's an absence of that today in many online communications. And so when we look at the fabric of Facebook, which is all about connecting people to each other and having great relationships and, and, and cultivating that community over time, um, having a mechanism that takes something that could be a source of distancing. Um, if, if you uploaded a photo and it made me upset and I didn't tell you anything about it, that, that uh, pushes people further apart. Yeah. If instead of having that, you could have something where you can communicate how you feel and then you can feel hurt, like the other person says, oh, I'm, I'm sorry it made you feel this way, this was not my intent at all. And you begin a dialogue, even if the photo doesn't come down, which is a perfectly legitimate outcome, that relationship gets closer and that bond strengthens. And so we hope if we have interactions that have um, a positive result for people, that people will go like, you know, what happened there? What can I learn from, from that communication? Yeah. And take this into other aspects of their lives. So when you think about trying to promote a community that brings people together as opposed to distancing them apart, is this part of the reason underlying, you know, why there might not be the dislike button that a lot of people are often asking about? I think so. I mean, I, yeah. I think that um, uh, dislike uh, could be very easily misinterpreted. Um, and the ideal form of a dislike is one that begins a conversation. Um, so you want to be able to say, hey, you know, that thing that you uh, shared, I disagree with that. Um, or that thing that, um, that, that you posted with Agni made me sad or was upsetting to me. Um, and you need really good ways of communicating emotion for that to be a successful conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're starting in this realm of like photos and feedback um, and, and, uh, and also bullying is another area that we're exploring to build tools that can successfully communicate emotion to, uh, between people, these more complicated emotions. Um, but we hope that if we do a good job on this, that what we can learn here can be applied in many other areas of online communication. So in embarking in this really, you know, still mysterious but rapidly growing world, you know, of online interaction, has there been anything that's really surprised you during your time at Facebook? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think every step along the way there's been surprises. Um, the, the numbers I talked about, which is only 20% of people willing to send a message telling their friends, but most of their friends wanting to hear about it and feeling good about the contact, that was a really big surprise. Um, another one is uh, when people go into the report flow, for most of them, over 80%, it's extremely important um, for the photo to, go, to come down. But we believe that the action of um, acknowledging this is what's happening, naming the emotion, um, that you're experiencing, and then communicating that to the other person in a way where you feel like you've successfully um, uh, uh, are heard. Um, the combination of those things make it so that at the end of that experience, we ask them how they feel about the person that uploaded the photo, and the numbers are 50% positive, um, which is, again, it's surprising considering you're going into this, going like, oh, where did you share this, uh, this image of me? Yeah. Um, another one that I think has been a, a very important insight, which goes against anything that you've seen in terms of computer design and experience is that uh, you get taught in all computer design classes that language has to be very clear and very universal. Mm -hmm. So we, the, the, this, this slide where we ask for emotion, uh, how a photo makes you feel, our first version of it 
had adjectives um, mm -hmm. like embarrassing, just the word embarrassing, uh, just the word saddening. Um, and we just had like the simplest cleanest UI. And then we had an option sending other word people to type in. And only 50% um, uh, of people would select an emotion. And then uh, the, the, the other people would, uh, the other 30% would put something in other. And what would they select in other? They would type in, it's embarrassing. Hmm. We're going like, wait, there was like an option for why what's going on? Um, well, it turns out that it's important when you design things online that you use language that matches the experience and they, that people use when they talk about things with each other. So we changed the options to sentence fragments. It's embarrassing. It makes it sad. Um, and, and when we changed the emotions to uh, sentence fragments, we went from a 50% selection to 78%, uh, which is in the world of online systems, that, that 30 point swings are just like completely nuts and wonderful. Um, and we've applied that principle in other areas of the work where the language is much longer and much more descriptive than what you would expect from any normal product that you have. But all of the measures of the language say having language that matches people's experience, that captures what it is that they're feeling and they're trying to say, just like really works. And, and, and to the tune of 20 or 30% 20 improvements in the areas where we've applied these principles. Wow. So in what way have you felt that your collaborations with people at Berkeley like Dacher Keltner and Paul Piff, you know, people at Yale like Mark Brackett, among many others, um, how has this work from people who study affective science, you know, in psychology, how has that informed the kind of work that you're doing now at Facebook? Oh, it, it's been um, insanely wonderful. Uh, yeah. the, it's uh, <laughs> very thankful because uh, it, 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 everything I'm talking about has been born out of conversations with them. So in the work we've been doing with, uh, with Mark um, uh, Brackett uh, from Yale on bullying, um, we're asking these really big questions about like, what kind of bullying is happening for you? How does it make you feel? How intense is the emotion? I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty big to say, hey, are you, are you feeling um, afraid? How afraid do you feel? Um, and, but it's central for being able to give people kind of the tools that they need. Um, and, the partner, and, and these are very close partnerships where we meet up with them once a week and we talk through the different ideas, we share the numbers. Um, and, and, uh, and the same has been true of the relationship with Paul uh, Piff and with Dacker and Emilina Simon Thomas from Berkeley, where we sit down and, and we look at the experiences people are having and we're asking the big question of like, like, what's really going on here? What touches? And when we first began getting exposed to their work, like the, the emotional intelligence work and, and the um, uh, uh, self-regulation and emotional literacy for kids with Mark uh, and Brackett, and the work that uh, the very really good is doing with Paul's work and Dacker's work and Emiliana's work mm -hmm. about the importance and ways that people communicate emotion with each other, um, it was it was very exciting for us because we're like, okay, this this is a total application for everything we're doing, and and it was the basis of of the compassion research days that we have, of which we have another one uh, tomorrow that we're very excited about. That's so exciting to hear that. Facebook is taking the science of emotion and using it to change the way that we interact with this world of Facebook that so many people participate in. Yes, and it's, it's our hope by talking about it, like talking with you today, by having compassion research and these other um, outlets that we're pursuing to help other people understand just how much we've gotten out of our partnerships um, with uh, the, our, our researcher friends. Um, and, uh, and because I think anybody who's building any kind of tools to enable communication ought to be learning from what we're learning, um, ought to be um, working with their local scientists to figure out how they can explore these ideas. Um, because by every measure of the work we've done, it's been a positive thing for the people who use Facebook. Um, and, and, and we hope that by the data that we get and the results that we're sharing, that illuminates uh, some pathways in the field. Uh, because uh, one of the things you talk about when we're getting started is most studies in the field span one to 200 people. Mm -hmm. uh, and everything we've done here spans hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that have gone through this and are telling us how it's making the field. And it's like, wow. and the results hopefully help um, open up pathways for other areas of research and inquiry. I mean, absolutely. Those, those kinds of sample sizes are things that you know, psychologists like myself and the ones you collaborate with, we could never dream of, right? <laughs> you know, you're in there. 
yeah, Facebook, you know, not so bad <laughs> when it comes to just being able to access so many people, right, and really get truly rich emotions that are things that are meaningful to them, you know, pictures of themselves, relationships with their friends. I mean, this is where emotion, the, the meat of it is. Yes, and, and there is a real, um, I think, responsibility on us to honor the trust that people have in sharing this information through us and providing them the best tools that they can. And, and really the genesis of all of, of this work is going at the issues that people are having on the site and understanding them and understand what's going on, what happens when there is a breakup and, and somebody posts pictures of the, of the couple when they were there together mm -hmm. and how do you resolve that communication between people um, what happens when, uh, like, a, a lot of, it turns out that a lot of bullying is not intentional. It's somebody coming in and saying, hey, you look really beautiful today. And then uh, the person looking at, at the message, feeling bad about their self-image, and then navigating that. And up to the point where we began these partnerships, I think the standard for um, the industry is, like, you look at a report, and if the report meets certain criteria, a hand comes down from the stand, makes the, the piece of content go away. Uh, but who learns from that? How do you grow? How do you help the community heal and improve from that? Instead, what we're trying to do with, um, with uh, the work that we're doing, for example, on bullying, is can you talk to the person if you feel comfortable doing so who uploaded the content? If not, can you reach out to somebody whom you trust that can support you navigating this? Because the best thing you can do for somebody who's the recipient or feels bullied or targeted is to get somebody in their life who can sit down with them and help them navigate the situation and hopefully give them tools to navigate it as well. And so this is all, this is the first year of the field. We literally began working on this a year ago uh, in a truly earnest partnership with our scientists. But, um, but I think there's a lot of good work that remains to be done in the field. So what do you see in store for the future of emotion and social media in Facebook and, and more generally? Uh, so I think we need to be exploring different ways where people can communicate emotion to each other. Um, there's work around voice um, that's really interesting uh, in terms of feelings. There's work about facial expressions and, and, and how could you actually communicate those more nuanced feelings through facial expressions. Is there a better smiley to be had um, than the ones that we have today? Um, and I think there's also a lot of work to be done in supporting different kinds of communities. We're um, looking at, at, at what we can do, for example, with veterans. Uh, whereas a community that in order for them to get support, it has to come from somebody whom they trust and, and, and they have a sense of identification with them. And so being able to give people the tools that make them feel as seen, heard, and met online with respect to each other seems like it's, it's, it's something that we're just beginning to understand about the work from the last year and that we will be exploring for the foreseeable future. So what kind of advice do you have for students or people who are interested in learning more about emotion, you know, and how it sort of, um, I don't know, sort of manifests in this world, this social media world and in Facebook? What would you tell them if they want to learn more about it? So I would say two things. One is we do have this Compassion Research Day videos, resources, articles, yeah. and we're happy to see what people have to see for themselves there. And so we're going to be live streaming the day tomorrow. Um, and uh, and there should be there's going to be lots of really wonderful uh, stuff there, uh, but the other one is I think the biggest lesson that I've gotten out of um, my work in this space, which is that um, a lot of people seem to think that because it's online, it is different, and and as so you start from the thesis, it, it has to be different online. The mechanisms to resolve to see these things, it has to be different online, and they they start to carve out whole new areas. And it turns out it isn't. Like, people are people. And if you want to make a big difference online, the best thing that you could possibly do is do a great job of understanding how people relate and communicate and resolve issues with each other in different kinds of communities across the world. It turns out in Tibet, you, can't, you, you have to be in communal living and you have to see the person the day after. So you don't have the luxury of like, being really mean to them and then, or disrespectful to them. Because no matter whatever happens, I mean, you're going to have to live with them the next day in fairly close quarters. So everybody has, like, people has to be more respectful yeah. than you sometimes find you have to be. Um, but you could go into a high school and study what are the emotions that, uh, like, uh, teens communicate to each other that help them resolve and navigate conflicts and take those lessons and then go look at a chat room online and say, what can I, what have, what I learned in the high school? What, how could I apply this to a chat room? Um, what I have learned from the wisdom of a community that seems to be functioning really well 
how can I apply that in in this other context? And and that's the way that information needs to flow. Uh, so I think that the best thing I could tell a student that's getting started on the field is to pick a problem that uh, that gets addressed by successful communication of emotion in real life, like within a circle of friends or in a school or something like that, and study that. And then see how those results and lessons map to an online environment. Because there's a lot of that that needs to be happening in the coming years. And again, as I said, we're just getting started. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us today, Arturo. It was fantastic to hear your thoughts. And thank you very much for having me. Thank you. So this concludes our Experts in Emotion interview with Facebook Engineering Director Arturo Bejar. Thank you so much again.